And this one, we're going to delete get name for now. We'll, we'll revisit that in a minute. This one is going to be called, it's going to be a public function and it's going to be called call. And call takes in a name and it takes a collection of arguments. Now what happens is call runs whenever a function can't be found in a particular class. So let's say I delete get address here. If I go back to killerphp here and I echo or I refresh, you'll notice nothing happens. If I comment out this call function, you'll see that I get call to undefined method, blah, 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 get address, it can't find it. But with this call function, we don't get any errors anymore. If I actually echo this, then I can say has been called. And if I refresh this again, you'll see that call has been called is echoed instead of, you know, whatever the address is. So using this approach, we can dynamically create methods in our class. So in this case, I want to make sure that whenever I do something that starts with get, it immediately gets uh, called or it actually returns the value of a variable. So we're going to write a little bit of code here. I'm going to create, I'm going to, basically I need to get the method prefix, which in this case is a substring of the name and we're going to go from 0 to 3. So if I just do an echo of the method prefix, we can see that the method prefix is get. If I go to echo get address and I put, you know, xyz address, then I'm going to get xyz. So basically it's just getting the first three characters in the name of the method. The next thing I want to do is I want to get the rest of the method, the, the property that it's accessing, because there's there's quite an obvious uh, repetition here. We could have get address. Actually, before we move further, I'm just going to create first name. Actually, yeah, let's do first name, last name, uh, protected email. So now we have all these properties. You could imagine that if we had getters and setters for all of this, we would have, instead of a you know, 10 or 20 line class, we would probably have a 50 or 60 or 70 line class. So things would start growing rather quickly. And now I'm also going to grab the method property. Now the method property is, in this case, it would be address, but it could also be first name or last name or email. A property is another way of saying it's a variable sitting inside of a class or an instance of a class. So the property here is address. And right now we're going to be getting the property dynamically. So I'm going to say method property equals. And I'm going to start by getting everything after the name and the fourth character. So if I echo method property, I'll get dress, which is very interesting. Actually, we want the third character. So then we get address, which is great, except that we want this A to be a lowercase address, right? We're following a very strict naming convention here. It's called, uh, I think it's called camel case or uh, Hungarian notation or something. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Basically, the first character is lowercase, and then if we want to have uh, subsequent names or nouns inside of our variable name, then they're also uppercase. So in order to do this properly, instead of getting the third character, I'm going to get the fourth character. And I'm going to grab the third character and I'm going to lowercase it by doing str to lower. And then I'll just concatenate the two. So now I should get address, lowercase. So we're almost there. The next step, instead of echoing the method property, is to actually just return it. 
so I could just say return this method property and I'll get Eiffel Tower so you see instead of actually going in here and saying you know return this address I can actually pass in a variable and it'll do exactly the same thing which is really cool so let's see if we can create something a little more generic for handling all of these cases So I'm gonna have we want to return the method property in the instance where something begins with get but we also want to have our setters to work dynamically as well so I'm gonna get rid of set address here and let's see if we can make that dynamic as well to do that I'm going to start with a switch statement and a switch statement is exactly like else if or else and if except that you're uh, just declaring it a little differently so you'll see that you'll see what this looks like in a second so a switch statement basically allows you to create different cases based on a particular variable so if method prefix equals get then we'll do stuff where method prefix equals get and then we'll break and then if the case is set then we'll do something where the method prefix equals set and then the default case in other words it's anything but get or set we're actually going to throw an exception and throwing an exception is a way of basically telling the you know the programmer or the user or in basically your your application that you know something didn't go right 